At the airport in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States, President John F. Kennedy and other American officials await the arrival of President Amadou Ahijo of the Federal Republic of Cameroon. The first person to welcome President Ahijo at the start of his official visit is President Kennedy. Many other officials and diplomats greet President Ahijo and his party, including the ambassador to Cameroon, the Honorable Leland Barrows. Accompanying President Ahijo are their excellencies Jean Faustin Bataillan, Victor Kanga, Tabe Emmanuel Egbe, and other ranking dignitaries. Mr. President, I want to welcome you to the United States and to this capital on behalf of the American people. I think all of us, living as we do, uh, a great many uh, thousands of miles from your own country, having a different history, separated in time and space, are impressed by the effort that you personally have made and your people have made to build a viable and strong economy and country. Mr. President, uh, we're proud to have you as our guest. Monsieur le Président, je suis heureux d'avoir pu répondre à l'aimable invitation que vous m'avez adressée et je vous remercie sincèrement pour les paroles que Mr. President, I am happy to have been able to respond to the invitation which you addressed to me. And I thank you sincerely for the words which you have just spoken about my country and myself. My joy on standing once more on American soil and being welcomed here by the president of this great nation is equaled only by the friendship which my country bears you yourself and the people of the United States. I bring you the cordial greetings of the entire people of Cameroon. The White House, the United States presidential residence, is the setting for a luncheon in honor of President Ahijo. President Kennedy welcomes his guest. The two leaders and their advisors discuss a number of questions of mutual interest. They note with satisfaction the efforts recently undertaken to create African unity and reaffirm the many goals and ideals shared by the United States and the Federal Republic of Cameroon. Dusk settles over the American capital as President Ahijo's first day in Washington draws to a close. Next morning, President Ahijo's day begins with a motor tour around Washington. The buildings and monuments are pointed out to the distinguished visitor by Chief of Protocol, Angier Bittle Duke. The most beautiful and most important is the Capitol, where the lawmaking bodies of the United States government hold their sessions. This monument is a memorial to Abraham Lincoln, the American president remembered for putting an end to slavery. President Ahijo next visits the Islamic Center and Mosque. The center provides information on Muslim religion and culture. It also serves as a center for the study of Islam in the United States. That evening, a reception is given for President Ahijo by the Cameroonian ambassador.
Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, G. Menon Williams and Mrs. Williams arrive to greet President Ahijo. They are followed by Mrs. Dean Rusk, wife of the American Secretary of State. Others present are the chiefs of diplomatic missions to Washington and high American officials. It is President Ahijo's last night in Washington. The following morning, he flies to New York, the largest city in the United States. Eight million people of every race and religion inhabit this man-made forest of towers and broad avenues. Paper serpentines and confetti shower down on President Ahijo as New York extends him its traditional welcome. The city's multitudes show President Ahijo the extent and the warmth of America's regard for him and for his country. United Nations headquarters is President Ahijo's first stopping place. There he visits the new Dag Hammarskjöld Library, a memorial to the man who gave his life in the service of the United Nations. His host and guide is Acting Secretary General Uthant of Burma. Leaving the United Nations, President Ahijo travels once more within sight of New York's towers of steel and stone. His destination is Long Island University. There he receives an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. After the ceremony, he observes that in this age, knowledge and understanding are indispensable to everyone. At his suite in the Hotel Waldorf Astoria, President Ahijo receives a visit from the governor of the state of New York, Nelson A. Rockefeller. A second person of note arrives at the president's suite. President Ahijo has an exchange of views with Ambassador Adlai E. Stevenson, chief of the United States delegation to the United Nations. A reception is given in honor of the visitor by New York's mayor, Robert F. Wagner, and Mrs. Wagner. The mayor expresses New York's pride and pleasure in being host to the distinguished president of Cameroon. The culminating honor paid to President Ahijo is the presentation of the gold medal of the city of New York. He also receives a plaque commemorating his visit to the city. As the last day of his visit to the United States comes to an end, President Ahijo prepares to return to his own country. He takes with him the knowledge that between the United States and his homeland, there exist bonds of friendship and of common ideals, and that through his visit, those bonds have been strengthened.